Would you please welcome Sandy Vallette? A few weeks ago, we had at the close of our service cardboard testimonies. And if you were here, you know how impactful that was that morning. And a a number of people came and just simply shared a testimony of their life, what Christ has done and flipped the cardboard. And Sandy was one of those. And I've been wanting to just give everyone an opportunity to sort of hear the backstory. Oftentimes we see something, it really speaks to our heart, but we don't always know all the situations that took place. And so this morning, I hope that you will really listen intently as Sandy shares her story. Hello, thank you for this morning. And I am just thankful that I have freedom, freedom from my past, and I've had healing. And so I just want to say before I start that if my story rings true to you, I'll be up here at the front, and you're welcome to come up and talk with me. So a couple of Sundays ago, I was challenged once again by the Phil Hybels video, The Local Church is the Hope of the World. Every time I hear that message, I am moved to take action. Don't sit on the sidelines. Get involved in people's lives. It's the only thing that we get to take to heaven with us. Am I loving people like God loves people? Do I value them as God values them? Do I pursue them as God pursues them? I'm not talking about the easy to love people. I am talking about the extra grace required person, the addict, the disenfranchised, both in our church and in our society? And am I willing to come alongside of them? It takes a fired up Christ follower to be able to come alongside these people and give them hope. Are you willing to step up to the plate? We had a great Sunday service that Sunday. Let's not fall back to where we have been at a church. Let's build momentum and see God work miracles and wonders among us. These, those people who were involved with the cardboard testimonies are the miracles of which I speak. I am one of them. It took someone sharing Christ with me for my life change to happen. Take your, responsible, your responsibility seriously. God does. I am so thankful that my friend's parents took their responsibility seriously. Dwight and Hilloa Lang have gone to be with Jesus and are in heaven, but they loved me and they shared Jesus with me when I was far from lovable. For if they hadn't, I wouldn't be here today. For you see, chronic depression and suicide runs very strong on both sides of my family. If they hadn't shared with me, I would be dead today and in hell. When we stand before him someday and have to give an account and everything is stripped away, what will we say to the question, how come you didn't share Christ with fill in the blank? I'm just like all of you. I get too busy and too absorbed with myself and in my life, and I forget about others. However, I have learned to listen to the whisper of God. Time and time again, God prompts me to share with someone or to invite them to church. And how many times have I chosen not to do it? Far too many times. Now he uses the image of me standing in front of him someday and him asking why I didn't share with them. When I'm honest, it's because I'm in a hurry to get home, or I'm tired, or I'm busy, and the list goes on and on and on. Then the image of me standing before him comes to mind, and I talk to myself, and I offer up my excuse as to why I didn't share, and then I say, wow, 
That's a pretty lame excuse. It doesn't cut it. God's serious about us sharing Christ with others. Mm. So if I'm in my car, I turn around and I go back to go back to where it was. A lot of times it's at the store. I go back, I get in line, and I go back and I share with that person. Sure would have been a lot easier if I had just done it the first time. But it takes me a while to catch on. So let's follow Dwight and Hillowa's example and take action in sharing Christ. Invite others to church or to your small group or out to dinner or the lunch or the movies or over for a barbecue. Are we going out of our way to reach other people? Let's do that. And then let's talk about what God does this week in our midst. Let us not have this Sunday just be another Sunday. Would you pray with me, please? Dear Father, as we now look at your holy word, Help us to be intent in our listening, to realize that a story like Sandy shared reminds us that you can take a life and forever change it. Father, you give us hope, not just hope, living hope. Father, we would take advantage of that and that we would follow through on that which we have said to you. I will follow you. Father, this morning as we look at your holy word, may it be that we would consider how we can take the reality of your word and live it out in our life today. In Jesus' name, amen. Maybe like Sandy, you've had a life of struggles in your world. Maybe you have faced times in your life where you've wondered, how can I get through this? Why should I continue trusting God when something, one thing after another after another happens, comes upon your life? You know, right now we are in this series called Our Incredible Hope. Our Incredible Hope that Peter, the Apostle Peter, writes about. You know, Peter could relate to what Sandy spoke about this morning. He could relate to a life before Christ and then what a difference a life with Christ makes. And sometimes, just like anyone else, Peter found himself, even after Christ, struggling, uh, doing things, saying things that he really didn't intend to, but they just happened. They came out of his mouth, his actions uh, betrayed himself, betrayed his, his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet, there came that moment in Peter's life, like it happens in every one of our lives, the moment where we don't just acknowledge Jesus, we allow Jesus to take over and literally run our life. You know, Peter walked in step with Jesus for three years, and, but it wasn't until after Jesus left and the Holy Spirit came upon him, did he realize all that God intended for his life. And he realized how great it is to fall in love with Jesus. So let me ask you a personal question. You don't have to raise your hand, okay? You can keep this private to yourself. Have you ever fallen in love with anyone? I have. Uh, Many of us have. Now, some may not have arrived at that moment yet in your particular life where you have fallen in love with someone. But when you fall in love with someone, it changes everything, doesn't it? It puts a smile on your face. I said it puts a smile on your face. Oh, some of you. uh, Anyway, falling in love is one of the greatest things that can happen in anyone's life. And just remember, do you remember do you remember the day when you fell in love with Jesus? Do you remember that? Do you remember the day when Jesus came into your life and changed you forever? And he put a smile not just on your face but in your heart. 
He just, he just changed everything for you. And you felt tingly. You know how it is when you fall in love with someone. You, you get the tingles. You feel tingly. You can't wait to see them. You, you want to please them. You want to know as much as you can about that person that you're falling in love with. You, you want to connect with them. You want to do things for them. It, it, it just sort of changes. Now, if you've been in love with someone for a long time, uh, things happen, right? Life comes. Uh, disappointments happen. Uh, twists and turns take place. Disagreements. But through it all, when you have that, that ongoing love, that un, ongoing just sense of this is right. This is right. You remember that song we sang just before the break? You remember what you sang? You remember the words? Hey, you remember? Jesus, I love you. You remember singing that? Hearing that? You, you see, I think of all people, you and I have the most to say, I love you. We have the biggest reason ever, Jesus Christ. I think when we get together, and we get together once a week, uh, we come into this place, but when we believers come together, I can't think of a better thing than to simply yell out, Jesus, I love you! So here's what I want you to do. See, you thought you were coming to church just to sit. I want you to participate with me, okay? It's okay. Your second service, we broke the mold first hour, so you're free to participate, okay? If you're a follower of Jesus this morning, I want you to do something with me, okay? On the count of three, I want you to say, Jesus, I love you. But I don't want you to just say, Jesus, I love you. I want you to put your 4th of July energy into it. Okay? Come on. You know on special celebrations you let loose. Even those of you who are so quiet and demure. Okay? So on the count of three, don't worry, you're invited. You're not obligated. In fact, I'm going to turn my back so I don't see you. Okay? And, and now, first hour was really great. So I expect this hour to be even better. Okay? So on the count of three, we're going to yell out, Jesus, I love you. Okay? Are you ready? Can you handle it? One, two, three. Jesus, I love you! Awesome! You guys are better than first hour. Didn't that feel good? Somebody in here, I know what you're thinking. He's going Pentecostal. (laughs) What more can you say? And yet, in a life of struggles, I love this. Hope, God's hope, eternal hope, living hope, is the concrete confidence that tomorrow is taken care of by God. I love that. I love to remind myself of that. I don't have to worry about tomorrow. I don't have to fret about it. I don't have to struggle against it. Tomorrow is taken care of. Why? Because God says, I have given you my living hope. It is concrete. It is absolute. It is guaranteed. And no one can snatch it out of your hand, my hand, or your heart. I love the fact that my Savior, Jesus Christ, loves me so much. He has given me a living hope. I just think, wow, what a way to live. I want to encourage you that it isn't some effervescent, tingly emotion. It is an absolute understanding and awareness that my life is full of Jesus. And Jesus just simply wants to take my life and live it 
through my life every single day. The things, listen, when it comes to struggles, we all have them. And the Apostle Peter is about to take us into a little section in chapter 1. So if you have your Bible, get there if you want to. I hope that you do and have it and get there. Uh, The things that test our faith reveal the depth of our hope. And that's what we're going to look at today with struggles. Listen, every one of us have struggles. That's a human thing, okay? But the struggles that Peter talks to us about are the struggles that happen because I'm a follower of Jesus. Now, honestly and frankly, we who live in America, we who are in the American church, don't get this to the level that others have lived it. I don't know of anyone, I have yet to meet anyone in my world who has been faced with death because of their love of Jesus. But I have met many people who seem like they are in the face of death when they have to say something for Jesus. That ought not to be. We ought to be so in love with Jesus that it's just a part of our life. That we want to talk about Him. That we want to share our story with others of our relationship with Jesus. Listen, when I fell in love with my wife some many years ago, I'm not going to tell you how many, it's been... A long time. And I still love her, by the way. I said I still love her. That was kind of a humorous little thing. No, anyway, I still love my wife. I'm in love with my wife. You can relate to this, many of you. When you fall in love with someone, it, it, it just, it changes. It changes. Something happens. It's no longer I have to. It's I get to. It's no longer I'm required to. No, I want to. And see, that's the way it ought to be with Jesus. And that's what Peter's going to write to us about this morning. Starting at verse 6. I want you to see these verses for yourself. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while it is necessary, if necessary... You have been grieved by various trials, so that the testing, the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that perishes though it is tested by the fire. You know what that means? The gold that you have in your life. Many of you are wearing gold. There's coming a day where even the most precious metal on planet Earth is going to go poof. But the metal you're wearing right now has gone through fire. It has been, it has been purified. And they do that so that all the gunk rises to the top. They skim it off and it's left with the precious metal like gold. May be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen Him, you love Him. Here's the thing that is so awesome about this living hope and love of Jesus. I met my wife many years ago at Bible college. The moment she walked in and sat down in front of me, I turned to my buddy who was with me and I said, there she is. He said, who's that? The girl I'm going to marry. I was like star-crossed. I mean, I had never met her. I didn't even know her name. And she walks in and boom! She, I saw her. And something happened. Just imagine the level that goes to when you have never seen Jesus. I have never seen Jesus. I have seen the the result of Jesus in my life. I've seen Jesus' impact in my life. I've seen Jesus do phenomenal things that my wife could never, ever achieve. Ever! Because she's human. And Jesus, my Savior, even though I don't see Him with these eyes physically, I see Him every day in my life. 
listen, when as that is happening for all of us, you can't help but be in love with Jesus. And yet, even though you do not see Him, Peter writes, you believe in Him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Listen, that is living incredible hope, even in the face of struggles. Now, I would guess, in a room like this, among us, there's probably some individuals. You may be one of them. You've come into the room this morning. You've come to worship God. You, you want to love the Lord with your whole heart. But right now, you're struggling. Something's happening in your life. Maybe you've been tested this week. Maybe you've been challenged. And Peter writes about the fact that even though we are challenged, we are up against things. A lot of stuff we're up against because of our choices. Let's be honest about it. But sometimes when you stand for Jesus, it costs something. Maybe not to the depth of others around the world or down through history. But I'm telling you, my friend, you and I are living at a time where it's never going to be any better than it is today. It's getting worse. We are tolerated in America. You understand that. As a follower of Jesus Christ, you are tolerated. The world tolerates us until we say Jesus. It's amazing when you just talk about Jesus, how people don't know what to do with you. How they don't want to get too close. In fact, they may end up not wanting to be your friend. Maybe they walk off and act like a friend, but then they laugh behind your back. See, the world hates Jesus. And Peter understood that. For when Peter had the Holy Spirit come upon him on the day of Pentecost, just like the moment you asked Jesus into your heart, the Holy Spirit comes into you. It changes everything. And Peter... Peter paid with his life. Now, I have never met anyone who was facing death because of their faith in Christ. But I've heard about them, and I read about Peter, how he died for Jesus, literally. He was put to death because of his love for Jesus. You know, the thing I've been thinking about here this week especially, is, you know the worst thing the world can do to you and me? You know what the worst thing is? They can send us to heaven today. That's the worst thing they can do. Now, I'm not saying that we all should stand out in the parking lot and wait for them to do us in. But if they did, so what? I'd be in heaven. They have nothing to look forward to. And yet, way too often, you and I, as followers of Jesus, we act so much like the world. I, sometimes I just look at myself and I think, good night, David. Get straightened out, man. You, you've got everything. You have absolutely everything. They have nothing and don't know it. And that's what Peter is writing about here. He was writing to a group of people in his day who were suffering, literally suffering, because they would band together and stand for Jesus. Whoa. Listen, the struggles that you and I face in our life, in our walk with Christ, you know, that daily, moment-by-moment walk, come from forces designed to take us down. You know that, don't you? If you've read and spent any time in the New Testament, you know this to be true. Especially in the book of Ephesians, the letter to the Ephesus church that the Apostle Paul wrote to. He wrote about the very same things that Peter wrote about. In a little different way. So I want to share them with you this morning. Here's what he writes in Ephesians chapter 6. This is what you and I face every day, just like they did in the first century. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. 
For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the, the, I can't see that, authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. That is what you and I live with every single day. I don't know if you consciously think about this, because you think when you walk in here, this is a hermetically sealed place, and nothing bad can happen here, right? If you believe that, uh, come see me. I need to help you, okay? Satan is right around us. Satan has a force. Yes, cosmic powers. Some people think, well, uh, cosmic powers, that's what you see when you go to the movies. Okay? No, listen, it's real. Satan hates you and hates me. You know why? Because we've turned our backs on his satanic, evil world system. And don't kid yourself. Satan is out to get us. He's out to take you down. He'll use anybody, anything, at any time to ruin your fellowship with God. Because He knows He can't take you to hell with Him. He knows He's going to hell. He wants to make it that way for you right now. And there are forces all around you every day. I'm not doing this stuff. It's real. And we believers ought to take it in reality and realize it's real. The forces of Satan are present. But the forces of heaven beat him every single time. See, some people, some followers of Jesus complain because they think, Why does God let me face this then? If God loves me, if God's Son died on the cross for me and spilled His blood for me and I'm saved and I'm born again, I shouldn't have to face this garbage. Sorry, you live on earth. Sorry, you're a human being. We all face it. But with the temptation... I love how Paul puts it in 1 Corinthians. With the temptation, with the evil forces, with the cosmic powers... I have a way of escape for you. You know who it's through? Jesus Christ our Lord. The one we are to be in love with. The one that we say we we believe, we talk about in our little groups. Yeah, that one. What's inside will determine how you handle what comes at you from outside. Do you understand that? I'm still realizing and learning and growing, hopefully being different than ever before. The more I'm in love with the one on the inside of my life, the better it is when I face all the garbage on the outside. This week, I've had two opportunities to sit with people in my office. These people I've never met before. They came in looking for something. I had the privilege of sitting down in my office with them and just sharing my, t- my story. Started talking about Jesus. It's the best thing for me. Because I'm one of those who, if I didn't have to talk about it, I'm okay. How sad. No, God provides so often many opportunities for me to share Jesus. And I know why. So that it gets out of my mouth. It gets out there. Listen, that's what living in love with Jesus is all about. Peter says, even though you have to face the struggles and the trials of life right now, Remember this, it's just for a short time, and I'm with you. What's on the inside will determine how we handle what comes at us from the outside. So let me ask you this question, personal, private. 
How in love with Jesus are you today? How in love with Jesus are you? Are you in love with Jesus at the level of as long as Jesus does something good for you, you feel good about Him? Are you at the level in your life where you're in love with Jesus when you're with fellow believers and they happen to sing some good songs? Are you in love with Jesus at the depth where even though you right now in your personal life may be facing stuff that you wish you didn't have to face, but you love Him anyway, trusting Him, depending upon Him? Are you at the level of love where you're willing to tell the world how wonderful He is? Where are you today? Listen, we all face struggles. We all have stories. Our story may not be exactly like Sandy's story, but every one of us in this room have a story. A story of how the love of Christ redeemed us from hopelessness. In a moment, we're going to close. We're going to sing a little chorus that we sang earlier. And and while we're doing that, I invite you. We're all going to stand up so it won't look weird. Uh, I invite you. Maybe this morning you're struggling. And maybe this morning your love for Jesus isn't quite what you thought it might be. Or maybe you realize, I need to go to a new level. I encourage you, whether we're singing the song or after we sing the song, I encourage you to come this way. Uh, Sandy and I are going to be here. Sandy would love to just pray with you and for you, and I would too. And We encourage that this morning. Don't be ashamed. Don't feel weird. It's okay. We all face these moments and yet the love of our Savior covers it all stand with us if you would